Welcome to The App Show. Mike Agarbo here with my good friend, John Beeler. We've got a pretty uh, cool show today. We've uh, got a full lineup. Uh, later on in the program, we're going to be talking with Jen Ledger. She is a woman behind a new app called Cuber. And this thing is awesome. It's an app that helps you save money and actually transfers money away from certain things uh, into a special account so that it's hard for you to get at. Uh, so for example, if you're making purchases, it uh, will actually online, it'll actually round up uh, any of the purchases you make up. Maybe it was uh, $10 and 50 cents. Uh, it'll round it up to uh, the nearest dollar, take that 50 cents and put it in a, a rainy day jar, essentially for you to save up for various things. So we're going to talk about how that all works. And uh, we'll be talking with uh, our good friend, Adrian Salgard. He's the man behind Salgard Mobile Accessories. We've had him on the program before to talk about some of his inventions in the past, including a solar-powered backpack for your tech gear. He's got some really cool new stuff uh, coming out, including solar-powered speakers and a solar-powered battery that uh, you can basically use the sun to recharge. This stuff is awesome. But let's start uh, with some of the news, uh, John. Looks like uh, SpaceX and their Starlink internet beta is uh, going to the next level. This is uh, Elon Musk's company that is launching literally thousands of satellites into low Earth orbit to provide internet access, first of all, to rural areas that, that uh, typically can't get high-speed uh, connectivity. Uh, you could sign up for the internet beta here in Canada, but now it's asking for an address update. Did you sign up for this, John? I did not. No. No, I, I wasn't sure if it was just for, you know, they, they were originally asking for uh, postal codes and zip codes. And I was thinking that they were going to be separating that out. And if I wasn't, you know, if I'm living in, you know, Metro Vancouver, I don't really have a need for that service. And it makes more sense to let people in the rural areas have it, access to it first. But now it looks like they're actually asking for your specific street address. Well, this is uh, something exciting for people that just can't get high-speed internet where they are. And again, this is uh, uh, typically up in, in northern uh, Canada. Uh, from what I understand, uh, and again, no one's really tested this out yet, uh, you'll be able to get high-speed internet. Uh, you know, you'll have to have a little antenna that is provided by Starlink, but you'll be able to get uh, high-speed internet to your, uh, your home or, or office uh, up there. So... Uh, I'm interested to see, uh, you know, if they can jump through all the CRTC hoops, if this actually works and what the pricing will uh, be like. I think that, that what the pricing will be like is the key point because I think a lot of these places do have access to some form of satellite and even that is very expensive. So um, uh, like typical satellite, not the Starlink satellite ser services. And it's also very slow. Um, Starlink sounds like it's going to be, you know, good enough for gaming even. Moving on to some other stories here. Uh, Sony is uh, spending $250 million. That's a quarter of a billion dollars for a minority stake in Epic Games. Why is this important, John? Uh, I think it's important for a couple of reasons. It's, it's basically uh, Sony's realized that uh, Epic Games has been sort of the source of some of the biggest games uh, in the gaming community. They're, they're the ones behind Fortnite, which if you're a parent and you have kids, you probably know what Fortnite is. Um, and uh, it, it also helps them sort of have an additional roster of games for their new PlayStation 5 console, which is coming later. And, uh, and basically, I think it's just a, a good call, like a, a partnership uh, between both companies. It's mutually uh, agreeable for both sides. I think it helps bolster Epic Games on the Sony platform and also helps Sony have all the desirable stuff. And I'm actually wondering if that's going to start meaning that we're going to have some exclusives only on the Sony platform from Epic Games. We might see that. Uh, and again, it, it's an interesting model with Fortnite. It's a free game. They, they make money only on the little in-game add-ons, like uh, different types of uh, um, costumes and stuff uh, that you can, can purchase for your, your character. Yeah, and they don't add any benefit at all to your gameplay. <laughs> They're strictly cosmetic. And it's like a billion-dollar game. Yeah. Well, they, they did, they've done a number of big partnerships with some big brands. Like there was a big Marvel tie-in when all the Avengers movies was out and they've done big Star Wars ones where you can get your own Stormtrooper costume for your character in the game and that type of thing. And so it's, it's, it's very desirable in, in the game to have some of these additional costumes and options. Well, I think it's interesting too, John, because uh, Sony 
we know them from their hardware, Sony TVs and uh, Blu-rays and VHS players back in the day, beta players. Uh, but, you know, looking at the video game market now, John, I, I, I don't think there's going to be a PlayStation 6 or an X, you know, the next generation Xbox. I think, you know, a lot of these games will be cloud cloud based. And so, you know, you'll look at Sony, they're investing in all these game companies and content because yes. that's where the money is in the future. Yeah. It's just the, the question is what's the delivery mechanism and if it's going to be a console, will it be a smart TV or something like an Apple TV box? Quick story here. Uh, Lego has, uh, officially revealed their new Nintendo Entertainment System. This is, <laughs> remember the old uh, NES? Now you can get a Lego version of that uh, that you have to put together. It doesn't actually work, like you can't play it on a TV, but it does come with its own little TV and kind of a scrolling Mario game landscape as well. Yeah, the, <laughs> the, the, this, is, this is like so many checkboxes for so many nerds out there. Oh my so, God, yeah. Because you basically, you've got the Mario universe, you've got Nintendo and the NES, which is a very popular platform, even to this day. I play it quite a lot on my little retro game handhelds and stuff like that. But then you've got this amazing little TV that you put together in Lego and you turn a crank and you can actually play Mario on that with a crank. It's pretty fun and it's coming out later this year. So that's going to be something that's going to be pretty cool to see. And again, it's not like you can't play Nintendo cartridges, although you actually make a fake Lego Nintendo yeah. cartridge. It's, it's purely analog. I think it's like 250 bucks, John. Yeah. Probably, <laughs> probably not in my future unless Lego sends me one. Well, dare to dream. Yeah. Okay. We uh, have to take a break. When we come back, uh, we'll be talking with our good friend Ad Adrian Solgard uh, about some really cool new solar-powered speakers and power adapters, something that you'll probably want to have. You're listening to The App Show here on the Chorus Radio Network. Back after this. You are back with The App Show. Mike Agarbo here with John Beeler. I want to talk to uh, an entrepreneur who's come out with uh, a few cool tech products uh, over the uh, years, and he's got a whole bunch of new ones uh, coming up on Kickstarter that also have a big sustainability message as well that we'll get uh, into. We've got Adrian Solgard uh, on the line. Thanks for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me. Uh, pretty excited to have you on. Uh, maybe tell our listeners, before we get into the new stuff, uh, some of the stuff that you've uh, invented in the past. Yeah, sure. Uh, so the first physical product I made was a bicycle lock. It was a lock that lived inside of the bike through the seat post of the bicycle. Um, about I ran that company for about three years. Then I had this idea for a backpack with a solar panel in it and a lock attached to it as well and put that on Kickstarter. It raised $600,000 and went on to raise another $1.2 million via Indiegogo. Uh, and that kind of got me on this path to creating products in the travel space. Made a suitcase that has a built-in shelving system. Ended up winning Time Magazine Best Inventions in 2018. Uh, developed a hexagon-shaped watch that allows you to tell time a little bit faster and a few other bits and bobs, different backpacks and a few other, other innovations. <laughs> and now the newest couple of things have just come out. Yeah, so these uh, are available as part of a Kickstarter uh, program. Uh, let's go through some of them. Uh, there's some pretty interesting stuff here, starting with uh, the home base. And I want one of those things so badly. <laughs> uh, explain to the listeners what this is and what it looks like. So the home base is an L-shaped shelf that lives on the wall and it's got built-in wireless charging in it. So you hang it on the wall and it's a spot for you to lay your phone down and your phone will charge up. Uh, but it's also got a magnetic hook on the side so you can leave your keys on there. You can there's some space for your wallet. There's uh, an Apple Watch adapter that you can add onto it as well for charging your Apple Watch. So it's kind of this like home base, you know, like a, a landing pad for all your tech accessories to just live. Then when you leave the house, you just stop at the warm spot, grab all your stuff and go from there. Now we've made it to be compatible with our solar powered speaker, the boombox. So the speaker can sit on it and it can be wirelessly charged. And the shelf has a built-in acoustic amplifier for the speaker as well. So you're able to pump the music through there and it makes it even louder for when you're in the house. Then you go out on your balcony, just grab the speaker, bring it with you and it's fully charged up. This is very uh, kind of Ikea looking. I, I love it because <laughs> um, I'm just, you know, more and more of our, our devices are wireless now. And I just, I just want to get rid of all the wires. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. this thing here, you could, um, you know, put this on your wall. Obviously it's got to get power somehow, but, you know, depending yeah. on how fancy you get, uh, you know, a small little cord down to the outlet, or if you get fancy, you can get, I guess, an electrician in or something to get the power right to the unit itself. But it's so nice 
just to be able to drop your phone, your, you know, your uh, wireless AirPods and stuff right on the, on the, the ledge there and it gets charged. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's saying it looks Ikea ish. I, uh, so I'm a Norwegian Canadian. I designed this together with my Danish friend Thor. So it does have a very Scandinavian aesthetic. To it. <laughs> uh, how much does this thing go for? Uh, full retail is 169 US for the home base. And that's available uh, as part of a Kickstarter program uh, right now. Yeah. You mentioned uh, your solar boom box. This is, uh, yeah. I think, a fantastic idea for uh, on-the-go music. Tell, tell us about it. So we originally developed it for, for that, the backpack. I think you guys have had life packs on the show before. Yes. The backpack. And can the viewers see the video or probably not? Probably well, we'll not. have something up on the video podcast. Right. Okay, cool. So for, for those of you listening via audio, we have a, a backpack that has a solar window in it. And in there, you can slide in the boom box or the juice pack, and it allows the solar to always be charging up when you're on the go. Um, there's a few frustrating points with a speaker, which uh, if you traveled with one, you know that either your phone dies or the speaker dies, and they never kind of last enough time. So we put in a huge battery. It's a 10,000 milliamp hour battery. The speaker can play music for 96 hours straight. We've tested it. Um, and so... You, you've always got enough power from the device to then charge up your phone, or you can use the the device to, it just powers itself. If you leave your house, you're forgetting to charge your speaker, the solar kind of acts as this backup power source where one hour of sun will give you about two hours of music. We've seen a lot of solar charging devices out there, but generally it's barely a trickle. And, and this sounds like pretty impressive uh, to be able to just, you know, use it out on the go on the beach or yeah. whatever. And it's always sort of topping itself up. It's all oh, exactly. And it's, it's not meant to be the primary source of charging, but it's, it's that extra, like keeping you topped up all the time. Yeah. So there's an actual solar panel on this thing. Yeah. So the whole dark, when you see, when you see the image of it, that dark side is all solar panel. And so my, my question now is, um, does it have to be like a bright sunny day? Does this work when it's partially cloudy? How does it, how does it work? So think about it like a sunburn, right? You can get a sunburn on a cloudy day, but you're more likely to get a sunburn on a bright, full sunny day. So this, the stronger the sun, the more power you'll generate. But it'll still generate some power when it's cloudy. There's always, it's, it's powered by UV light, so. So if your friends don't suck all the power off of it by charging their phones <laughs> on it, you can, you can play music for days. With it. Exactly, exactly. The other thing you, you said it's rated for 96 hours, but does that include uh, solar power charging it at the same time? No, that doesn't. So like the, the way that we did that testing, it's actually hard to find a space in your life that you can leave music playing on a speaker for four days straight. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I created this weird box that like this little sound installation box and I left it playing at the office over a long weekend once. Uh, well, we did it several times, but like that was the first way to test it out. Um, and so, yeah, it's, that's with, with no solar power. So the solar or any other additional charging will, will go above and beyond that. Uh, back just to quickly to John's uh, point there about, uh, you know, how good it charges. Like, have we seen uh, better technology when it comes to solar charging? Because I remember back years ago, these solar panels been around for a while. It would take days to get you uh, a charge on anything. Yeah. No, so we are using the latest technology that's available to us. We call it fourth generation solar uh, because it does capture light across the spectrum. So yeah, it is, it is a better solar panel. Uh, and then we've got some really good technology for the way that it routes the power into the battery. The next one here, uh, I mean, I wish I had this thing camping. Uh, the solar juice pack. Tell us about this. So, so that's taking the same idea as the speaker, but you take the speakers away. So it's a solar panel with a power bank so you can charge your devices from it. We put in a bigger battery, it's 20,000 milliamp hours, uh, and it's got USB-C as well. So if you have a MacBook Air or one of the smaller 12-inch MacBooks, you can actually charge that computer from it, which is a really nice way to, to extend your battery life if you're working somewhere remotely. Um, or you can just use it to charge your phone traditionally. Um, and yeah, same, same idea. It's that power on the go. If you're, if you're working remotely, you know that having access to power and the ability to continue working is, is one of the most important things. How long would it take to charge this thing up using just solar power? From full, it would be that one with the 20,000 milliamp hour battery. It charges uh, 400 milliamp hours per hour. It'd be 40 or so hours. So again, the, the solar is there to keep it topped up. It's not the primary charging method. It's a way to, to keep it full. And so I, I mentioned one uh, uh, use of it, like camping. Or, are there other applications for this? Yeah, camping. Or if you have it in one of our life pack, the backpack with the solar window, that's another way for it to stay charged when you're on the go. Um, or just, yeah, just camping, uh, if you're boating, anything like that. Both All these devices are drop-proof and waterproof. 
so if you take it out on the boat or you're taking it out by the pool, whatever, it's just that that power ready for you. I think it'd just be great for my back patio. I don't have to worry about running wires. Yeah, and it's it's got wireless char- the juice pack has wireless charging too. So if you just lay it down, you can just pop your phone on top of it and it'll charge your phone wirelessly. Is there any problem with heat from all this? You know, you're you're having your your uh, your solar charger in the sun, the bright sun. You're putting your phone on it. Everything's getting warm. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's getting warm. Yeah, your I mean your phone can't handle laying out in the direct sun, but these solar panels can. And the okay. batteries and the devices are insulate like the the internal bits are insulated enough so that um, heats of up to sixty degrees Celsius are totally fine. Oh, okay. Which, okay. So we're not going to have any exploding that. batteries. Correct. Yeah, okay. that was that was the biggest concern from day one. Was like, how do I make sure that this never explodes on anyone? <laughs> uh, quickly, the prices on those two. Uh, the juice pack retail is 99 and the boom box is 149 uh, us and on, on Kickstarter, they're 79 and 114, I think Get a bit of a 79 deal. and 99. Yeah. Yeah. There's a bit of a, we, so this is our sixth Kickstarter campaign. And what we find so exciting about Kickstarter is we get the product through and pass the prototype stage, get the tooling ready. And then as we're placing our first production order, we can say, Hey, you guys can get this at a discount and you'll be the first people to get it in your hands it's such an interesting way for us to be able to get more products into more people's hands sooner and they get a discount while they're at it. So it's a, a great, yeah, it's a win-win. Adrian, uh, I wanted to talk about the sustainability aspect of uh, these devices and kind of your commitment uh, to that. Uh, I believe that uh, these devices are actually using recycled uh, products in their manufacture. Yeah, absolutely. So the, the, the first product that we made was this solar powered speaker four years ago for the first version. And that was my first step in the direction of like doing something sustainably. Then about a year later, I was traveling and I was in Bali and was supposed to be on the most beautiful beach in the world, but it was covered in plastic. And I thought, maybe there's some way we can do something with this. So we started looking at how we could recycle some of this plastic from these beaches. And we found a way to make that into the fabric that we use in our bags and our backpacks. And then we discovered that there's another material source using similar raw plastic, but converting it with a special technology, a special method, this group out of Pennsylvania, and they're using it to make hard plastic. So we're actually making the entirety, the home base, the mesh that you see on it, that's a fabric made from ocean plastic. And the hard shell, that L-shaped edge you see, that's also made from ocean plastic. So the goal of the company is that we can do things to raise awareness for sustainability throughout, but also while doing things and using it and being a great test case for, for some of these new products to be made that we can lead the way for other companies to do similar initiatives. Because if all the companies in the world were using recycled content, it would really reduce the amount of plastic that we're outputting and it would all, like, help raise so much awareness for it. How, how difficult is it to get ocean plastic <laughs> in these? Like, how, how, how it's, they- uh, it's, a, yeah, it's, a, it's a long process with uh, quite a few complications. So we, we have a, a supply chain of different people. So there's groups that collect plastic from beaches and riverways. So they work with local people in the Maldives and the Philippines. And they're collecting, so this is called ocean-bound plastic. So it's, it's plastic that within one rainfall would be in the ocean. It's a lot easier to collect it once it's on land before it gets into the water. And also 90% of plastic sinks once it's into the ocean. So uh, we work with groups that collect it. And then from there, once it's collected, we have to clean it, sterilize it, break it up into smaller flakes, crunch it down, melt it, and then it becomes whatever it needs to become. And how much of your devices contain these recycled materials? Uh, everything has some level of recycled content in it. Uh, the bags, all the fabric, both inside and out, are made from recycled content. The suitcases, the entire inter- the inter- interior lining is made 100% from ocean-bound plastic. The shell is uh, polycarbonate, so that's a different material. It's 30% recycled. But yeah, we, we're, we're trying to push the limits on every single product that we're making and make sure that we're using as much recycled content as possible at all times. Is it easy to get this stuff? Uh, yes and no. So it's available to purchase, but the quantities you typically need to purchase that are in the, the scale of tons. So we're talking three, four, five, six, eight container loads of stuff to get it where it's clean and filtered. So that's one of the reasons it took us so long at the start was how do we get it going without like these massive, these massive orders. Uh, and so that's when we ran a Kickstarter campaign uh, for another backpack and we were able to use that funding to, to buy that first few container loads so we could start to make it. Fascinating. Um, but uh, how, does this add an extra cost to the devices? Yeah, it does, for sure. It, it's, it, the, to use this type of material, 
adds about four weeks to the production timeline and it's about double the cost in the raw plastic. But of course the plastic is not the only component in the product. The batteries make up a, a pretty substantial part of the cost of these things. So it's, it, it's more costly, but it doesn't need to make a huge impact on what the end retail price would be. Have you had any challenges uh, with your Kickstarter and the current pandemic that we're having as far as, you know, uh, your supply chain and, and even just getting, getting the word out, you know, a lot of the normal ways that you would do that probably have been affected in some way. Yeah. Supply chain side, we're, we're in a good spot now. Um, the factories in Asia were pretty complicated during February, March, April, and then by May things were rolling pretty smoothly. And now June, July, it's been, been picking up a lot better. Um, getting the word out has been different. Um, but not not too bad because a lot of people are on their computers looking and trying to find exciting new things. So from a Kickstarter perspective, I don't think that the pandemic had too much of an impact. We're talking with Adrian Solgard. He's uh, the man behind uh, Solgard uh, Mobile uh, Devices. They've got a great Kickstarter campaign going right now for uh, some solar-powered speakers, uh, battery, and uh, also a really cool uh, home base for uh, charging all your devices and a really cool IKEA-looking uh, shelf that uh, <laughs> put, uh, on on your wall, and uh, looks like Adrian, we're uh, we're capturing you live from your car somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm off the side of Lake Michigan. I ended up in Michigan for a day and a half for some meetings, and <laughs> and there you are. Well, I, I want to thank you for joining us. Where can people find out more information? Obviously, they can check out Kickstarter. What's your website? The, our website is Solgard.co. So that's www.solgard s o l g a a r d dot co. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. When we come back from the break, more apps to talk about. Stay tuned, including one called Cuber, something to help you save some extra money without you even knowing it. Back after this. We're back with the app show. Mike Agarbo here with John Beeler. We're going to have a look now at a cool uh, app that we've come across that helps you save money. It's called Cuber. On the line, we've uh, got the woman behind Cuber, Jen Ledger. She is the CEO and founder. Thanks for joining us today, Jen. Thank you for having me. Tell us about Cuber uh, in a nutshell. What, what does it do for the people that uh, use it? Yeah, so what Cuber does is really changes people's behavior with how they manage their money. Um, so it, it really shows people where they're, they're spending money and then makes different habits so that instead of spending that money, they're now saving it towards their goals. So planning ahead and saving for those short-term goals. So uh, when you download the app and, and you launch it, what, what are some of the things that you can do with it? Um, so the first thing that you would do is create your goals. So, and we also make suggestions on what you can save for. So you can create, um, you know, a goal for an emergency fund is one that we always recommend and start people off with just to build up that emergency cushion. And then you decide how you want money to move into that goal or we call them saving jars because we took the the traditional you know saving jar that people used to put their change in um so in the app you see a little digital saving jar um so you can do something simple as you know saving to your jar every other week or every time you get paid um you could round up your purchases whenever you spend money you can do a round up and move money into the jar um we do lots of little uh nudges and challenges. So some of the nudges that we do are, um, you know, make your coffee at home today, and then you can come into the app and save $5 towards one of your goals. We also do no spend Wednesday. So anybody who wants to participate, you know, doesn't spend money on Wednesday and then saves the $30 that they normally would spend, you know, at restaurants or on coffee, they move that $30 towards their goal. So all of these little, it's a lot of like, small amounts of money, but they all add up um, and people see their jars filling up and, and then they get more motivated to save and add more jars. And so uh, do they, they have to move the money like into an account or I guess even a physical jar, is that correct? No, we actually, so we connect with, um, we get the, the information that's on a void check, so the bank account information, and we actually pull the money from um, their traditional checking account and we hold it in a savings account. We call it the Cooper Vault. So it's saved in a separate bank account. Um, and that's what our users really love about it because there's not that temptation to, to spend it. So when it's in your checking account, you spend it. 
it's held in a different account, so you're not tempted to spend it, but you can get it back within a couple of days if you need it. So if you have an emergency, you can cash it out and it goes back into your account. And so this separate account is at your own bank or is it something you guys have set up? We've set it up, but it's with um, a, a credit union. So it's with a Canadian financial institution. So that's where the money's held in a trust account. And, um, and then, yeah, they can cash it out. So it's like, it's like a digital savings account. I, I love that. Um, that, that makes a lot of sense to me because, uh, uh, just even rounding up, uh, like you were talking about, uh, that, that could add up. Uh, what on average are people saving when they use this? Yeah. So it was really interesting. So, um, we've gradually increased the average savings since we started. So we started with a test group of users about two years ago when we launched, um, with that test set. And our goal was really to build up the average savings per user um, so we've managed to get it to, before the pandemic, we were steady around $140 a month per user in saving. Since the pandemic, it shot up to $200 per month per user. So people were really like, you could see people were really tucking aside that extra money and they weren't able to spend it anyway. So they were just saving what they could. What do you find is the most popular way to save money? Oh, geez. We have challenges in the app. So those are probably the most popular because what happens is we'll challenge somebody to spend, uh, save, let's say, $1,000 in a year. But if they do save it, so if they, it's a defined schedule. And if they accomplish the challenge, then we give them $20. So anywhere where they're, where they're getting incentives to save, um, those are quite popular. And then roundups, of course, because roundups are just one of those things that you don't really notice the money going out but then you go into the app and you look at your jar and it's got more money than you expected it to so people always love roundups could i I take the actual change that i have at home and put this in this jar because that's what i hate change i I know um basically you 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 couldn't because it's all digital um but you can do like a one-time transfer at any time as well so a lot of the rules are kind of on an automated schedule right so it just happens but if you did end up getting like your income tax refund a lot of people at that time go in and do a manual transfer just to kind of tuck it away and into the vault i'm Um, also i'm also wondering though like one of the things i do is i throw all my change in a container and then at some point i go to one of those machines where they just auto count it and give me some money and that might be a good thing like oh that'll be my my, my, my Cuber deposit for the, the month or the year or whatever. Yeah, that would be awesome. If we could get little machines and, and dump it in and it automatically goes to your, to your, your jar, that would be great. Yeah, that's a great uh, idea. Can you, can you set up a communal jar? Like if you were a family saving up for a vacation? That's one of the things that we're actually looking at right now is to do these kind of group saving or community savings. Um, one of the ideas we have is to you know, have this group emergency fund and everybody kind of contributes to it. But if you have an emergency, then you can withdraw as long as everybody agrees from the group. So um, people used to do these things a long time ago and it's, it's now coming back and becoming more popular. So it, it is one of the ideas we're looking at. Um, and also, of course, kids. Kids has always been on our radar. So we encourage parents because we do have a lot of mothers that are using the app. We encourage them to set within the app jars for their kids and I have one for my son Um, he has two jars in the app he's saving for Fortnite, and then he has his like saving jar that he can um, he doesn't really know what he wants to do with it but I always make him put money in there as well so he's learning um, to he's learning to to save money which is important Uh, how much does this cost then is there a charge for the app do you guys take a cut of the money how does that go um, there's no charge to using the app and there's no cut of money either. So it's, um, we're not making any interest off that money in the vault. Our, the way that we make money is, um, it's called match-based savings programs that we offer to employers. So it's, it's basically a financial wellness benefit because employees, there's a lot of Canadians who are just completely stressed out because of money. Um, so this is a financial wellness benefit that employers can offer to employees it's a match based savings program. So if your employee saves $500, the employer matches, you know, possibly a hundred dollars or whatever it is that they choose that they want to do. And we charge employers a per user per month fee. Very, very cool. 
We're talking all about Cuba, uh, an app uh, you can download for your iPhone or, or Android phone. Uh, we've got Jen Ledger. She's the CEO and founder. I want to thank you for joining us today. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks for having me. When we come back from the break, more apps to talk about. Stay tuned. You are back with the App Show. Mike and John here. Don't forget to hit our contest page, giving away an Alcatel flip phone. This is uh, the latest in flip phone smart technology. It's, uh, it's actually a cool phone. Uh, very basic. You can obviously send and receive calls. But it's also you know, got a few smartphone apps that, uh, that you might want to have. It's got Google Assistant built in, so you can use your voice to ask it for directions or play music. It's got YouTube and things like WhatsApp as well, and a little mini app store. Again, getconnectedmedia.com, hit the contest page. That's our, our newsletter uh, page. Subscribe, and you are entered. John, uh, came across uh, an interesting company out of uh, Toronto, and uh, I think they're called WXM. They've got this new uh, store traffic solution. You've probably seen the lineups outside of most stores. Uh, this will actually uh, regulate that uh, for you. Kind of yeah, cool. it's it, it's basically a little sign that you stick on your window of your of your establishment, and then you have an app, and you can actually have a go no go kind of like a stoplight f- to telling your customers that are waiting outside uh, once you've hit your capacity. So uh, it negates the need to have uh, an employee standing there um, and sort of regulating that traffic. Um, but it's uh, you know it, it's not. A ridiculous price. It's going to be about ninety dollars Canadian and shipping in August. So, um, well, it'll be interesting. I, I'm just not sure if all businesses will need something like this versus just sort of waving people in kind of thing. Yeah, it's apparently got two modes: manual or counter mode. So, uh, if uh, it, you, as the store owner, want to manually control that, you can, or you can have it set to counter mode so it knows uh, how many people are going out to let that many people in. Kind of interesting. Yeah, it'll be. Um, Something to follow, you know, with a lot of this type of technology and the, uh, the contact tracing, how well that stuff will all work and will we continue to use that in the next year? It's, it's, it's been interesting, though, just seeing the proliferation of new things that have been developed specifically for the pandemic. Like, have you been through a drive through and seeing the little crazy hockey stick things that they'll use to give you your um, either your food or, or the, the machine to tap your card or your phone or your watch? Um, And it's actually like a branded product that someone's developed and has sold to various companies. Well, someone's making money. Yep. Looks like that's all the time we have left. I encourage you to check out our website, getconnectedmedia.com. You can uh, see all sorts of tech videos, blogs, uh, and also our audio and video podcasts uh, as well. And we have a contest going on all the time this week. We're giving away an Alcatel flip phone. You'll uh, want to check that out. Again, getconnectedmedia.com. I want to thank uh, John, my co-host and uh, producer, and the rest of the team, including Christina, Nigel, AJ, Graham, Stephen, and Get. We'll see you again next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube page. And you know that little bell icon? Hit that and you'll be notified every time we post a new video. And comment. The more comments and the more likes and subscriptions we get, the more videos we can make.